Hello, everybody. Hey, thanks for joining me today on this Facebook Live. It's great to be back with you on this Monday. And, you know, the purpose of the Facebook Lives that I'm doing, these little chats, um, and of my website and the blogs that I'm posting there is, is really because I just want everyone to know how much God loves you. You know, I have learned so much about God's love and his care for us and his, how much he, he loves you personally that I just really want to share it with the world. So that's what I'm, uh, my purpose in these uh, little chats. And uh, God's giving me three topics to really focus on to share with you, uh, that include is love, but it's to talk about your identity in Christ, to talk about your uh, inheritance that is yours as a child of God, and to talk about what kind of influence that you can have in the world and the power that you have there. Hi, Nancy. Nice to have you with us today. And Don and Ilona, nice to have you back today. Awesome. Uh, well, you know, there are so many uh, religious lies out there in the world, and I grew up learning a lot of things that were really not um, true word of God, but it was more uh, religious stuff. And what my prayer is for myself and for you is that those lies are uprooted out, that we will know the true and pure word of God and who we really are in him. And I'm just praying for you to have revelation of that. And those of you that are on this chat and then then are also downloading my um, my 70 promises for abundant living, that you will really get a revelation of how much you are loved. So on Friday's chat, I talked about that uh, this week we would talk about about um, what our inheritance is as a child of God. So the first thing we've got to know about and really get straight on is who actually qualifies as a child of God. Hi, Vernon. Nice to have you joining us today, too. Um, so that's what I want to start talking about this afternoon is who qualifies as a child of God. So to talk about that, we're, I'm going to take you back to the beginning, and I mean way back to the beginning before God even created the world, uh, and kind of set the stage on this. Uh, before God created the earth, uh, you know, why, in fact, why did he create the earth? What was it created for? It was created because God is a God of love. He's not just a God of love. He is love. He is so, he is the embodiment of of love, everything love. And God uh, so loved us. He wanted to create a family. He wanted a family of his own. Can you imagine to be God and have all of the universe and have everything that, uh, all of the vast resources he has? He wanted a source, a, a, uh, a recipient of his love. And so he wanted to create a family. And so uh, you know how much fun it is for us to be able to give uh, gifts to our children. Uh, God wanted to be able to give gifts to his family as well. So he decided to create a family. Uh, but God knew that in order to create this family and to have a family, that it would have to be people who really chose him and weren't just, you know, robots or puppets uh, that would just follow his orders. He wanted a family, wanted a relationship with us. He's already got angels that take orders from him, but he wanted a family. And so um, he knew that he had to give this, uh, this family he was creating or man, he would have to give us free will to either choose him or reject him. They would need an option uh, to, to, to really choose him. Uh, so God decided to make man, uh, and he says in Genesis 1, he made man in his own image, and he gave him dominion over the earth. And he created the earth for man to live on. And then he gave us a choice. And God knew, however, before he even created man, that it says in, 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 chap, in Genesis chapter 1, he knew that man was going to go his own way. He knew that man was going to make the wrong choices. And even before he created the earth, he knew that man was going to need to be rescued, that he would need a savior. And so before the earth was even created, Jesus, the Son of God, stepped up 
to be the savior of all mankind. He would be the one that would redeem us. And so that's why the Bible refers to Jesus as the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth. And you know, when so the plan of salvation was in place before God even created the earth, which I think is amazing. That just blew my mind the first time that I heard this. Well, I've got lots of people joining. Hi, Denise. Hi, Bernice. Good to have you on with us, Mimi. Hey there, I haven't seen you for a long time. So anyway, so back to uh, to my story. So God, uh, so Jesus said he was the one that would be the sacrifice, that he would be the one that was here to redeem man, the, the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. So the plan was in place before he even created the earth. Then God created the earth, and he created the earth to have everything that his family would need. The, the sun and the moon and the plants and the animals, uh, the food, the resources and the minerals in the earth, he created it all for his family. So that when he put Adam and Eve, when he put man in the Garden of Eden, everything was completed that they would need. He desired, God's desire was that the Garden of Eden would spread around the world and that his children would live in abundance their entire lives, that we would never have any lack. And then he gave the choice. He gave the, the tree in the middle of the Garden of Eden. And that tree is called the knowledge of good and evil. And do you know, you realize he told them not to eat of that tree. Do you realize God never intended for his family to know, to have knowledge of evil? Wow. That's how much God loved us. He wanted to protect us from that. But the serpent, the devil, tempted Eve by telling her that God was holding something back from her and uh, that, that if they ate the tree, they would become like God. Well, that's just the thing. They were already like God. God had already made Adam and Eve in the image of God and given them dominion. But the, the devil tricked them because they did not realize and understand their identity. So they already had dominion over the whole earth. All they had to do was smash the devil with their foot. But the devil tricked them and uh, because they didn't know their identity. And so this is why this next week we're going to talk about understanding our identity because it's so important for us to know that so that the devil doesn't trip us up as well. But Adam and Eve fell for the devil's uh, trick and temptation and fell into to, uh, to temptation and sin, but that didn't catch God off guard. He had already had the plan in place. And that's why Jesus came. He came to die and to be buried and, and then raise, be risen again from the dead. And, you know, uh, there's a book out which I highly recommend to you. It's um, The name of it is Good News. It, the good news is so good, the bad news doesn't matter. It's by Greg Fritz, and he goes in detail through the whole um, whole good news of the, of the Bible. But in, there, in this book, he has a beautiful synopsis of, um, of the whole story of the Bible. He says this, the Bible is a love story about a God who would not give up on his dream no matter the cost. And I love that. A God who would not give up on his dream no matter the cost. And it did cost God everything. He gave his only son for us. So here's how you can know for sure that you're a child of God. This is what the Bible tells us. First of all, in John 3, 16, very familiar to you, I'm sure. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And then the next verse goes on to say that God did not come to condemn us, but that the world through him would be saved. So God didn't come to hit us over the head with a two by four and point out everything we've done wrong. He came to offer his sacrifice to us. You know, I have a brother-in-law who says he refuses uh, to believe in a God um, because he says, how can a loving God send anyone to hell? Well, it's actually quite the opposite. The truth is we were all born in a, in a condemned state. We were born doomed to hell thanks to Adam and Eve. But God sent his son Jesus to rescue us from that doom and to assure us uh, of eternal life. 
Jesus was our sacrifice. And all we have to do is tell the Father that we accept that sacrifice. We accept what he did for us. It's a free gift, and it is offered to everyone. Uh, really, no strings attached. Uh, it says in John 3, 36, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides in him. So that's very clear. Either you believe or you don't. You believe and have life, you don't believe, and that's the ones that are going to be condemned. In, in Romans 10, 9, this is what I shared with you on Friday. It tells us how we accept everything from God. It says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And, you know, although God is the creator of all men, the Bible clearly states who is a child of God. And it says it in John 1, 12. It says, as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe on his name. So, you know, knowing a child of God and knowing that you are a child of God is the first step. You want to receive that gift that he has for you. So if you've not done that, it's super easy. All you have to do is just talk to God, pray that it's really just talking to him, just like I'm talking to you. Tell God that you accept what Jesus did on your behalf at the cross. Um, it's a free gift. It's kind of, it's the same thing as if, you know, I give you a birthday present um, you didn't have to earn it. All you had to do is rip off the paper and accept it from me, right? It's the same thing with the gift that God has for us. He gives us a gift of eternal life. He gives us a gift of of, uh, of having our sins forgiven and, and knowing that we are uh, in right relationship with him. And it says, you know, we can't earn it. We can't go to church enough. We can't belong to the right church to get there. We can't read our Bible enough to get to heaven and earn it. We just have to receive it as a free gift. So I just want to encourage you today, if you've not done that, hey, it's simple. Just You can just uh, tell it to Jesus today. Tell the Father that you accept that gift today. And then uh, comment below or private message me and let me know if you're a child of God. I'd love to know that so we can kind of connect. And then go to wendyleekramer.com and download the 70 promises for an abundant life. Because once you are a child of God, all of the promises and and the ones I give are only a few compared to all of them that there are there in the word for that are intended for a child of God. All week we're going to be talking now about what that means. You're a child of God, and what is uh, what is your identity in Christ? It's pretty amazing. So um, also, if you download my pro the promises, the seventy promises between now and Valentine's Day, I've got a, a prize that I'm going to give. Your name goes into a drawing for a prize. So be sure and do that, and then join me tomorrow, and we'll talk more about what your identity is in Christ. Great sharing with you guys today. Pass this on to someone that needs to hear about God's love for them, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Good night. Bye-bye.